Hey, in this video, I am going to show you how you can go from a completely unstructured set of data that you might have for, you know, in your business or in you know, out of a product that you're using and turn it into completely structured, well-organized and nicely visualized data in just a matter of minutes using Google's new CoLab data science tools. These are completely free and I know it sounds kind of like scary and scientific, but actually it's super easy to use and you can do an awful lot with it if you know what you are doing. And even if you don't, you can get pretty far pretty quick as we're about to see in this demo. So I'm gonna go and take a bunch of sample data from Claude, turn it into some data visualizations that I can go and add to a presentation in just a couple of minutes. Let me show you how this works. Every business I know has this problem, which is that they've got data that they need to analyze in some form. Someone gives you a spreadsheet or a table, or you have to hit export from some piece of SaaS software that you're using. And frankly, it's a pain in the butt because we spend so much time moving stuff around, trying to get into different formats. But I never really was systematically taught how to use Excel and PowerPoint together, which I don't even know if they're still teaching that to people now because I feel old. But now I feel like we're not going to have to deal with that, particularly with this new feature from Google. This is inside of Google CoLab. If you don't know what Google CoLab is, then uh, it's a really cool AI development and data analysis place. If you already have a Google AI Studio account, you can go and create this, or if you don't, then you can go and do that. If you've connected the two, then you'll be able to use your API key straight away. But what you're going to do is go and jump into Google CoLab and it should land in something that looks a bit like this, where it says now start coding or generate with AI. Now, I don't have some massive data set to use. So I came across into Claude and I asked it to write me a, a highly detailed but fake data set that I can use to, for a test of AI readiness and adoption in the UK by enterprises in the FTSE 500. And Claude has hit the max token length. So it's clearly written a lot of data. Here it is. Massive uh, data chain, lots of different details in it. And I can see here it's for about 80 companies. So I'm going to go and download that file as a CSV and then hop over in here to into Colab. And I'm going to go give it a file to analyze. So I'm going to click analyze file from Gemini and I'm going to go to downloads and grab this UK adoption test and upload it. And I'm going to say, create me a dashboard of all of this data so I can analyze it. And let's see if it can just start working. Okay, it says here, I'm happy to help. Here's a set of tasks I can execute in your notebook. So data loading, it can load it into the pandas data frame. Don't know what that is, but I'm sure it'll work it out. Explore the data set to continue its structure, handle any missing values, wrangle the data into a dashboard, create visualizations, and then finish the task. And then it says, do I want to execute the plan? Yeah, let's execute the plan. Come on, Gemini, let's see what you got. Do we want to continue? Okay, it's now working. Down here, it shows you what it's doing. So it says connecting to Python 3 through Google Compute Engine backend, initializing and starting. Something is happening. I can see up here we've got now a RAM running and a disk. And it says here loading the data sets. OK, Gemini is now reasoning this. So what it looks like it's doing is importing the data fields that I gave it into some kind of structure here. It's looking at our data sets. Uh, it was looking for some delimiter. It's not there, couldn't pass the file, so it's checking for a different file format. Okay, it's going to try and understand the data set and understand its structure. And it's having a go at looking at all of this. And it seems to kind of hit some kind of error. Oh, but okay, it's automatically fixing it. Okay, it's found the data now, it's began to organize it. So we can see it's breaking this down into its individual tasks. Okay, so it's loaded the data correctly into Gemini. And okay, there might be like one or two errors in this, probably because it was just, I didn't give it much parameters when I created the data set. So it's attempting to reason through the code, it says, exploring the data. And over here on the right, you can see what Gemini is up to. So it says it's going to go on and clean it in a moment. So I imagine that's going to happen soon. It says here it's expected a few errors and it's completed some of its tasks. I mean, I don't know if this is kind of what a data scientist would do, but I, I wouldn't know how to do any of this. So it seems to be getting on with it quite well. Okay, let's have a look at the code that it's giving here. So reasoning. So it's attempted to load and process the data, but it failed. So it's kind of reload the thing. And you can click in here and see the reasoning tokens that are coming out of the Gemini model. And let's just go back and see what this says. So it said, here's the reasoning. The previous attempt to load it, I need to reload the data correctly and handle the single column format. So it's still cleaning our data. And now it says it's wrangling, preparing. Oh, okay, this is cool. Preparing our data for dashboard creation. Create a new data frame dashboard containing selected columns, it says. 
and, and create the derived format. Can you just see how fast this is working? This is wild. Like, how long would this take a data scientist? If you're a data scientist or you know someone that is, please do let me know in the comments. I, I have no idea how long this would take. Uh, it's always eluded me completely and was just something that I think without a computer science or a very heavy maths degree, I just would never be able to accomplish. So the fact that I now have this tool that is just free to use, it's inside of my Gemini and Google account, it's just doing it for me is crazy. Okay, looks like it's going. So this is beginning to kind of be a bit more understandable, right? So it's going to import visualizations using Plotly Express for a dashboard. Don't know what that is, but it's going to do it. It's going to check for the columns existing. It's going to do a scatter plot, a bar graph of different sectors, bar graph of different revenue categories, distribution of an AI readiness score if that exists. Okay let's see what it does so we're now running the dashboard and oh look some artifacts look like they're beginning to be produced what happens if i click one of these okay there's some kind of index artifact there what else is here okay more more to come we're getting there it says it's still doing data visualization we're six minutes in and we've already prepared all of this data cleaned it scrubbed it turned it into a format and now working on a dashboard to create an interactive dashboard i mean like in six minutes that's wild it may not be six minutes for you, by the way, when you look at this, because I'll have edited this down a bit, but I'm telling you now, it skipped some scatter plotting because it didn't have the required column. It says, okay, well, that's not very good. We need it to do this. By the way, this could be a complete bust. We might get to the end of this video and it's just done nothing. So we'll see. But thanks for following along while we work through it. Okay. It's creating interactive visualizations for a dashboard. It says the previous attempts failed due to incorrect column names. It'll re-examine the column names and give it the correct thing. Okay, so this is the thing that's so powerful about these reasoning models, is that when they run into errors, in this case, they fix it. Oh, oh okay, look, here we go. We're now, we're getting real data, guys. Like, this is insane. I Remember, we did nothing other than give it the data set and say, visualize this. No moving columns around, no creating pivot table, no specifying anything. It's just doing it on its own. Okay, so we now have some stuff to look around. I don't really know this interface, so I don't know how we're going to navigate it, but let's just keep going through the code. Okay, here is our output. I think this is our output. We now have AI adoption versus investment level. We can see the name of the company when we hover over this plot chart. Distribution of sectors. Here is our distribution of small companies in these different markets, medium companies and large companies. Distribution of revenue categories, amount of employees that the company has. Okay, and it's given us a summary. So no questions are explicitly asked in the task prompt. However, the overall goal was to create an interactive dashboard. So it's done that. Uh, it loaded the data set. It used all of this uh, data in the columns and they were renamed. It renamed the columns for clarity because it didn't think I'd done a good job of it. Well, I mean, to be honest, let's blame Claude. It did the job, first of all. And it's refined this. Ah, but download plot as a PNG. Okay, so we can do that. We can just come in here and we can download these things as individual files. And once we've done so, let's see what they look like. There, nice little graph. Your PowerPoint or something like that. Just go grab them like that, really easy. And just jump straight back into them. And I suppose if you want to edit them, then you can come back in and edit them here. But it was a cool thing to work through. And I think if you are more skilled in data analysis and know what you're trying to do, you would probably get a lot further with this. But the time save is immense. The fact that you can just come in here, give it a data set and create the graphs pretty much instantaneously for free, bearing in mind, because it's again inside of Google free product that uh, is intense. And we didn't even do anything that detailed to make any of this stuff happen. It just created a bunch of these graphs, which is pretty cool. So your mileage may vary, but let me know how you get on. I'll see you in the next one.